Welcome to Hey Man, I'm Josh, and uh, uh, good news, um, the other half of this podcast um, will be coming back um, sooner rather than later, I think, so uh, for those of you who are like, I can't wait for this show to have Jay go back, hey, me too, um, I can't say when, but I think it'll be sooner than I thought it was going to be, um, so that is good news. Um, but I am here. Uh, I'm your buddy, Josh. I am looking, if for those of you who are not looking and not on video, this is basically what my beard looks like when I don't put any color in it. And this is why I put color in it, because my mustache is the one part of the beard that, and the, like the middle part down on the chin, that hasn't gone gray. So it looks so weird. To just have black mustache, gray beard, except center chin black. So it's why I color it in. I also color it in because Beth's like, color that in, you look old as fuck. That is another reason. She's like, I don't want to look like I'm <laughs> walking around with someone's grandpa, which she is, by the way. She is walking around with someone's grandpa. I am a grandfather. But um, yeah, this is what. Old, old Gandalf Josh looks like. <laughs> you shall not pass. Is that, that may be my favorite line because it's the only one I remember. I do, you know what skill I do not have? I do not have good recall for quoting movies and I cannot remember words or names of songs at all. Like I'll, I mess up words to songs when I'm singing them all the time. You know what's a fun game to play? Is um because you know everybody's kind of you know what this is a fun game to play. Y um you know the when you think you know the words to a song and you sing it and someone's like what? So my cousin Gary used there's a song called Eminence Front. He said Eminence Front. He thought it was living in a trunk. Because we're living in a trunk. We're living in a trunk, but there's, there's so many of them. I'm so curious what yours is. There has to be, everybody has one. They were like, Oh, I, you know, I thought it was this or sayings. Um, Beth thought the saying was that point is mook. The point is mook. My ex used to think it was nip it in the butt, not nip it in the bud. So she was like, we were going in to uh, meet with the principal once to talk about my oldest son. She was like, well, I'm going to get in there and nip it in the bud. I'm like, make sure you tell him that. That's a great idea. Make sure you tell the president, the, the principal of the school that you're here to nip the problem in the butt. I'm sure that'll explain his <laughs> concerns over our son's academic struggles. <laughs> Yeah, man. But I'm happy to be here. If you can't tell, my mood is a 10 out of 10. Um, I I really have been feeling outstanding uh, since my recent bout with whatever the fuck I got hit with. If I look a little thinner, I am. Um, I lost a bunch of weight being out of the gym. I know people are going to hate me. It's By the way, this is all about perspective, right? Because if I don't go to the gym, I lose weight. And everyone's like, you fucking lucky, you suck, you lucky. Not really, guys. That means if I miss the gym for a week, I look like Matthew McConaughey from Dallas Buyers Club. Is that really luck? Would you consider that lucky? Do you know? I look like Skeletor if I'm just not in the gym five days a week. So, you know, different strokes for different folks, but um, I can't wait to start this sober journey with some best day brewing. Best day brew, everybody. Jacob and I. I'm going to be cracking some beers open when he gets back, but the non-alcoholic kind that tastes delicious. Best day brew, I'm telling you right now, guys. If you want the taste of beer, but you don't want the alcohol, this is your drink. It is so good. I've told you before, I like the IPA, but they're all so delicious. Girlsh, I think that's how you say it. Also very good. Best day brew, I say it every week. 
One of the other things I like about it is he's kept it a small company. Jim has not sold it off to Anheuser-Busch or any other place that's come to try to buy it from him. That would disrupt um, the the chain of ingredients or somehow make it a shittier product. He has kept it pure and good. Um, and I always like to support smaller businesses. This is a small businessman. Well, not small like, you know, anymore because he's growing, but he's growing the right way in a very exciting way. So please support uh, Jim and his, in his business. And if you're into beer, um, but not the beer with alcohol, best day brew, everybody. It's so delicious. Let me also say something real quick about the Tyson fight. For those of you who are disappointed, what did you expect? He's almost 60. He's almost 60. What we found out afterwards is that he almost died eight months ago. Right? Yo, guys, when people like Tyson looks quick, he's hitting mitts that aren't moving by himself. And I, I want to tell you something. And I kept telling people this move going up to the fight. And I'm not, don't, I don't want you to think I'm comparing myself to Mike Tyson in any way, shape, or form. But when I was about 47, and I've always been in good shape. When I, I got in a ring with Jacob. And this 47, that's almost, that's more, that's like a decade younger than what Tyson was when he got in the ring. And again, not comparing myself to Tyson. Relax, everybody. But even when I got in the ring with Jacob, the guys, you can do whatever drugs you want. And you can, and Tyson's strength was still there. But fast twitch muscles are fast twitch muscles. And stamina is stamina. And 30-year-olds have it, and 60-year-olds don't. I boxed with Jacob, and I could see the punch coming. My brain was like, here comes a punch. Let's get out of the way. And my face was like, nah, let's eat that. Because it couldn't move. I was moving after I got hit. You understand? There's just some things that you can't make up for. And youth is one of them, dude. That's why they say Father Time is undefeated. Tom Brady stayed in the league not because of his athleticism, guys. If he if his game was based on running, he we all know that would not, right? That was not his game. Boxing is athleticism. And if Jake Paul had been like, all right, I'm gonna stand in the middle of the ring. And we're going to hit each other. I would have been like, Tyson's going to win. Because his power is still there. But I, but if you had told me, and it's going to go four rounds, I'd have been like, nah, Jake Paul's going to win. Two rounds. I, I kept telling people, two rounds max. Two. That's why they dropped it to two-minute rounds, guys. When I boxed Jacob, I dropped it to one-minute rounds. And by the second round, I was like, I am fucking gas. Gas! So, and for people who are disappointed, man... Don't be disappointed in Tyson or Jake Paul. That th They marketed a fight. And if you listened to people who knew boxing, not celebrities, not Shaq, although fucking Sha I love Shaq, my favorite, but not people who were like, fucking Tyson's back. And by the way, if you looked at interviews with Tyson, that was the old uncaged, the animals coming out. So that got people hyped up. Like the when he told that 13 year old girl who gives a fuck about my legacy. I was like, damn, this dude is unhinged right now, but you still have to go in and compete. I loved the message he put out on his socials the day after he was super honest and a super evolved guy. And I agree with him, dude, that as a 60 year old man to be able to stand in a ring with a 30 year old dude who's been training after I almost died, you know, that is legit. Legit. So, yeah, man. I did not watch the fight because I was on stage. And if I'm honest with you, I wasn't interested in seeing that version of Mike Tyson. I grew up, I remember watching the Tyson-Douglas fight. I remember standing out outside of a bar uh, that was showing pay-per-view of the Tyson Holyfield fight in San Antonio 
And in peering through the crack, they had papered off the windows. And I remember thinking, this is probably the last fight as I watched. Because I remember watching him and just being in such awe of this dude. And that's how I want to remember him. And now I bet on Jake Paul. <laughs> but I didn't need to watch the fight. I was pretty sure what was going to happen. Um, and that's no knock on Tyson, man. I, I, I'm i fucking impressed he finished the fight. Truly impressed he finished the fight. And I uh, do, yeah, but I don't, for those of you who are like making fun of him or whatever, you yeah, dude, when you're that, you're, that was your dad out there. Put your dad, see, put some gloves on your dad and see how he does. Not good. I can promise you, I would not good. Now, you put another 58 year old in the ring with Tyson, uh, that's problems for that 58 year old. Zero doubt about that. That dude is going to take a couple of punches that might stop his heart. But a 30-year-old who's been training and knows a little bit, yeah. And I want to thank everybody, by the way, um, I, who came out to my shows in Bakersfield and Sacramento. Great shows. The Crest Theater in Sacramento was on fire. You guys brought some crazy energy. Guys! I had some people walk out for the first time and I don't know how long because something I said offended their sensibilities. And for you know me, I'm not a um I'm not a dude who's out trying to look, I may uh, uh touch on um subjects that make people uncomfortable, but I try to do it in an arms wide open way. If you know me, my stand up, I think the job of a stand up comic and other people have different ideas for this. You know, some people think they should challenge, you know, stand-ups to challenge the way you think. Some people think they should put uncomfortable things in front of you to laugh at uncomfortable things. All these are valid. I think it's valid however you want to do stand-up. I think my job as a stand-up comic is to make you laugh and have fun and walk out of there being like, that was a great time. Even if we do talk about uncomfortable things, we're going to talk about them in an arms wide open kind of way where you hopefully aren't feeling bad about yourself or bad for other people without getting into the joke, because I don't, it's a, it's a joke I haven't put out yet. Um, these people walked out and gave me the middle finger on the way, <laughs> on the way out. And, um, some people in the theater started to boo them. And this is what I want to say in America in general. Don't boo those people just like they shouldn't boo you. Everybody gets to decide what they're offended by and what they're not offended by. Do I think some people are, are a little too sensitive or they get offended for other people? Sure. Do I think they're missing out on a good time? Yeah, I do. But I'm, I'm not going to judge you or boo you for your opinion on how you want to live your life. I, this is the thing, you know? They mostly they missed out on a good time because that joke's right at the beginning of the set. But man, Sacramento, electric, Bakersfield, fuck yeah! And people who are coming to my shows, dude, are coming out. And these these shows are straight fire. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm finally back. To if you've seen me in the last couple of years, they, they, they were good times. We had great shows, great shows. But I'm finally back to who and what type of entertainer I want to be. So, yeah, come, 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 come. We are having a good fucking time. Uh, Bakersfield, I had never been there before. It was exactly the way people described it. Really nailed it on the head. I, I just, I guess I'll put it that way. No lies detected. <laughs> but a great time, man. A really, really good time. Feeling super happy and super blessed. I, um, man, I got to tell you a fun Indiana Jones story. So Indiana, my dog, for those of you who don't know, likes to poop on bushes and trees. And what I mean by trees is he will back his 
ass up to the tree and kind of get, I don't know if you can get on your tippy toes as a dog, but he gets as high up as he can. So the poop sticks to the tree. And then he turns around and looks at it and looks at me like, I think I beat my record that time. It's like he's doing a high jump. Amazing. He also likes to shit not on a big bush. He wants to be able to shit on top. Whatever bush he's shitting on, he wants to shit on top of it like a cherry on a Sunday. Always turns and looks. It's amazing. Like super funny. Loves pooping on bushes. Doesn't love pooping straight grass very much. But if you got a bush or a tree, but he's got a new one, which I love. This is new, meaning like he's really, he did it once or twice before, but I don't think he realized how much he liked it. So he likes to poop on a hill, right? Where his butt is on the upslope. So when he shits, he watches it roll down between his legs. It's so amazing. He's so happy. He does it and he kind of looks at me smiling like, dude, I just, can you believe my poop does that? It just comes out and then just rolls down the hill. He has so much, dude, I wish, and I'm not going to say I don't have fun pooping. I, it is very satisfying, but I, I, I've never shit on a tree on a bush or definitely never pooped down slope or up slope. So it's so much fun. Anyways, so he's pooping up slope or down slope, however, and watching it. And another guy who walks his dog in our neighborhood, big dog, he's, he's walking by one day and he was like, what is he doing? And I was like, he, he likes to shit and watch it roll between his legs. And so he was watching out of curiosity and he was just sitting there watching and watching. And then, um, I see him maybe like a week later and he goes, Hey, hey I got to tell you, I said, what? He goes, my dog must have seen your dog shitting on the hill and tried it the next day and now cannot wait to poop and watch it roll between his legs. I'm like, does he like it? He's like, he's so happy with himself. He's so happy with himself when he does it. And I was like, that is amazing that the dog watched it and was like, definitely trying that next time I poop. It was like, I didn't know dogs had that in them, but obviously the dog was paying attention more than the dude. And you know, it, it's like, dog. it's yeah. Dogs. I, I wish I could find, I wish I could find happiness in the simplicity of just watching poop run down, roll down between my legs. How great would life be if I knew I could be happy, but like I'm in a bad mood. I'm going to go up back. I'm just going to poop on the hill. It would be like, and this is basically my new attitude towards life. It's the poop on the hill attitude. It's simple things, man. You don't have, it doesn't have to be the best thing in the world to make you happy. Just like, is that make you, is that fun? Yeah, I'm going to do that. And I want to tell something else. I want to tell you, and I didn't want to make this, put this video on social media until I said it on here. From here on out on my social media, it's fun. I'm just going to be posting things that I think are fun. You might see me laughing a lot on there or, or filming some, I, I don't film people. Um, I don't, I did once or twice film people who I thought were wearing something funny or take a picture in public. And I got one comment once where a guy was like, dude, that dude just left his house in a shirt this morning and you're making fun of him. He just put on a shirt. And I was like, you know what? You're right, dude. I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to make fun of that. He's right, man. He didn't ask for me to make fun of him just because he was wearing that shirt. So I don't do that stuff. But man, I, I if I see something funny or I think something's fun or weird, guys, juvenile, if you don't like fart jokes, it's time to unfollow me now. Do you know, this is the level of stuff that I might be posting. Some people are like, dude, you're a 50-year-old man. First of all, 
55. Get your shit together. Second of all, farts have been funny since I was two. I, I, I can't help what my sense of humor is. That will never change. I hope it doesn't. I, I, I hope all of a sudden I don't need like a Dennis Miller thesaurus to make me laugh. Nah. So just so you know, from here on out, fun. You know what my brand is? Fun. That's it. There's enough tension and shit in the world. Fun, dude. And fun might be making fun of people sometimes, but not like an unsuspecting. But if it's like a news story or some, you know, something like that, you know what I'm talking about. I also, big announcement, turns out my eyesight wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I've been wearing these readers where people are like, can you see yesterday with those things on? What the fuck is wrong with your eyes? And I was like, well, I can really see the words. And they're like, yeah, but probably too well. And they were right. I didn't need the 2.5 readers. Turns out I just need the 1.25s. And I've got new frames. They're kind of like Harry, like Harry Pottery. And they're blue light. Whatever that means. Somebody was like, they're blue light. And I'm like, great, I'll get that. I don't even know what it means but I get to see blue light. They're not so blue when you put them on, but I don't, so I don't know what that meant, but blue light, come on, come get me. Whatever it is, I'm ready for you. Um, so yeah, guys, super good deal. Super happy to be back here in studio and not at the COVID quarantine convention. That Oh, also big news. I am going to be doing, there is a biohacking convention here in Vegas and they reached out for me to do, um, like 10 or 15 minute of a, like Oscar style monologue. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. I want to tell you, I was really nervous and am really nervous because I don't do jokes like that. I don't do like if you know me, I'm on stage talking about stories and relatable things and making them funny. But like joke, 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 joke isn't my style, which is exactly why I said yes to doing it because I want something that makes me nervous. I'm ready to make my butthole pucker. This is what, when you push yourself out of your comfortable zone, I think is where you find greatness. So I am either going to, this is, I don't think it's going to be a 70. I honestly think it's going to be a fucking 99 or a two because I'm going to pick a style and I'm going to go hard in the paint and either they're going to be like, this was great. Or (laughs) who the fuck booked this guy? So one of those two, and I, and I think it's going to be the first one. I sure hope it is because if you know, like I'm big into the biohacking health area arena. So I really want to get to know a bunch of these people. And so Beth was like, Hey, if you fuck this up, none of these people are ever going to talk to us. I'm like, yeah, but if I nail it, if I nail it, uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to, it's cold baths for life. You know what I mean? We're going to be steaming vaginas and sunning our buttholes until the cows come home. Um, I did get a couple messages from you guys last week that you felt Matt snuck an article in that got me talking about something that I'm trying not to talk about. I feel like you're right. Uh, I feel like he did try to sneak that in. If If you know, you know. And I want to let you know, I don't, I don't think it works this week. Whatever he's got planned, whatever articles he may be trying to slip in under the covers. Uh, Matt, I want you to know that me and the audience, we are on to you and your hidden agenda uh, of for whatever they're called, which I won't mention, just so you know. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I submit those articles to you ahead of time for pre-approval. Well, that's... <laughs> It kind of lifted the curtain on the Oz on that one, didn't you? (laughs) 
You do, you do. But and I and I have to say that when I saw that article, I was I didn't think, oh, this is gonna make me talk about, you know, let's stop getting into it because I know something will slip and I'll lose again. But I think we're gonna go the whole show today waist up. I really need Jacob here to back me up on getting you to talk about that stuff though. He's better at it than I am. J- well, Jacob really does g- push, goad me towards it. And he knows how to do it. Mm-hmm. I am so excited to have him back. Um, you know, if I'm being honest with you guys, I, I think the first month I was dealing with such extreme sadness um, for him. It was hard. I don't know if I ever was really able to express it anywhere. Not, not, not just here, but I don't think I figured out a way. I really think I tried to convince myself that, and this is true, good for him, um, hopeful, grateful. These are all true. I was all of those things, but I was also extremely sad, um, for him and just missed my buddy, you know? Uh, and I've really been able to work that out in my brain. I I will tell you honestly, so much of getting through the sadness was hearing from people, whether it was my friends or, or people in my community you guys online and sharing your stories of, of success and growth and love to know that you're not alone is so comforting. Um, and it's one of the things that has really changed my attitude, not really changed my attitude, but brought it back out that man, I, we're just all stronger together. And this whole division that we've had in the country, yo, I'm going to go on Megan McCain's podcast. And, um, and the reason I'm going to go on her podcast, cause I went on Corolla's podcast and I don't, nobody gave me shit about Corolla's podcast, even though Corolla is as conservative as a comic, any comic I know, I know I'm going to get shit for going on Megan's podcast, but I want to put my money where my mouth is. And where my money, where my mouth is, what I mean by that is, yo, man, I bet you when I get on that podcast with her, if I asked her, do you love your family? She'd be like, yes. Do you love your country? Yes. Do you want best for people? Yes. We just have a different ideas on how to get there. So I, we're going to get on that podcast and we're not going to talk policy and politics because that's what's going to divide us. We're going to talk about the things that we do agree on. It's... That's the place to start. The place to start is on the things that we do agree on and then figuring out everything else from there. So I, I, if I'm going to be a dude who really says like, we have to be able to get past political differences and treat people with respect and kindness. And she, I, I've followed her for years and I, I've always liked her. I'm not going to make any qualms about it. I don't, I don't, I don't think we there are a lot of things that we probably disagree on politically. There are some things that we do agree on politically, but, um, that's can't be the basis on whether I talk to somebody or not. I would go up. I, I will talk to anybody this, if I think they're good people. And this is w- the message that I am going to, tra- if I'm going to be and talk about it, I also have to be about it. And if someone doesn't follow me or is like, I don't like you anymore because you talk to this person, that is unfortunate. And again, you get to make your own decisions. But I think that is part of that react, emotional reactionary react, like is part of what's the problem in our country. Like, just like, so I, I, I just, you know, you, you might see me and, and do it. Find me 
whatever, send me, if you don't like it and you're like, no, I want you to go on this person's podcast because they think like this, I'm happy to, man. As long as I don't think that you're a bad person or I'm, I'm in, man. I want to meet people. I want to hear your opinions. I want to hear your thoughts. I, I want to, yo, most of the time, if you don't like somebody or a group of people, most of the time, not always, it's because you don't know them very well. And so you're scared. You know, you, when you hear people like from the Klan or white supremacists who have turned the corner, basically they turn the corner because they meet some black people. They meet a Jew. They have, you know, they have to work with a transgender woman. And they're like, oh, these are normal people. What the fuck have I been being told all along? And so, yeah, man, I think we just need to bridge some gaps. We don't have to agree on everything. We don't. So I'm going to be going on Megan's podcast. And I'm sure that's going to lose some of you. <laughs> but I hope you go into it with an open mind, you know? Um, Matt, can you think of anybody else's podcast that, like that that I could go on? You mean like political podcast? No, but I don't want, but we're not going to talk politics. That's the thing. I told her, I go, I don't, I don't want to talk policy because I don't know shit about it. About the Hawk Tua Girl. I would love to go on Hawk Tua Girl's podcast. Are you kidding me? That would be amazing. I do want to ask her, because my question is, first of all, I've dug in a little. I like her. So she's legit funny. And, I mean, so far, this fame hasn't changed her. Right? She still seems to be who she was at that Hawk Tua moment. Well, man, I do want to ask her what her dad thinks. <laughs> I'm sure he's he knows her. I'm sure he, he's like, that's not the craziest shit she's ever said. I'm glad that's all they got her on camera saying. But she seems funny as fuck, dude, and authentic. I'm on board for that, dude. 100% on board. By the way, I went back and tried to watch Deadpool with Wolverine. What'd you think? Worse. First of all, in the first five minutes, you're already breaking the fourth wall about eight times. You're calling Wolverine Hugh. You're talking about budgets. It is, and you just do it the whole movie. What I loved about the past movies is that breaking of the fourth wall was special. Do you know what I mean? It was like, oh shit, did he just do that? But it wasn't the whole movie. I think I'm the only person that thinks that that is a overhyped movie. Maybe, I think part of it is because there are so few movies. People are just like, I saw it in the theater. That means it's awesome. But man, what made it special I, to me was just too much of it. Now, I did watch the preview for the next Mission Impossible. Did you see it? Not yet. God. Ah, yo. Say what you want about that little dude and his little legs. But half the preview is him sprinting. If it's 78 or how old that alien is, if it, however old, if he's still, dude, I don't know about you guys. When's the last time you sprinted? Think about it. I was maybe 12. I don't know. No, I was probably in college playing baseball. Was the last time I, I should clarify, was the last time I sprinted without s pulling a muscle. I've sprinted since, and it lasts three steps before my hammy. Three steps. I stopped playing softball, guys, because I couldn't run after anything. Do you know? There's just, I, it was like, it turned into the run that I never wanted to be. You know that old dude run where your legs aren't really going striding out? They're just kind of up and down real fast. So it looks like your legs are moving real quick and they are, but it's more of an up and down movement than a long striding. This dude is still long striding, sprinting. Nobody in the history of movies has ever sprinted better in a suit or jeans than Tom Cruise. Prove me wrong. I know some people might say Daniel Craig. Nah, he was younger. This dude is 140. And he is dead on full sprinting. He's also hanging on to airplanes. You, this is why I'm going to see whatever movie Tom Cruise puts out. 
And I think he's probably batshit crazy. And I don't care. I don't have to invite him over for dinner. Although I would, if you want to come over, dude, open invitation. I would just like, I heard he's so intense when he looks at you, Matt. I heard he stares right through you. He says your full name and you're just like, I love you, Tom Cruise. I love you right now. So hard. So I'm on board, Tom Cruise. Don't, I just want you to know, I'm not saying don't come over for dinner and I'll make whatever you want, whatever Thetans eat. I'm on board for making. I don't know if Thetans have, but whatever Thetans are eating makes your skin and body look great. This dude is still jacked and he's like 184 years old. So I, but my point for Tom Cruise is, and this is, I, I truly believe this. If you are a hundred percent effort dude, or as Deadpool would say, maximum effort. If you are a hundred percent effort person and I'm probably, I may not even, if you're a hundred percent effort guy person, or you're somebody who, who is just a hundred percent authentic, even if I don't agree with what you're saying or even really like it, it's very watchable to me. I love a hundred percent effort. I love maximum effort. I love somebody who is unapologetically themselves. It's watchable. I may hate it, but I can't stop looking at it. And if you are going to hang off, if you're going to be legit, he's going to be 60 sprinting repeatedly in your movie. I know how hard it is to sprint right now. Come on, dude. I watched Tyson fight, but it's not easy. But if you're going to get yourself in that shape to do that, guys, in the previews, if you see the stunts that he's doing, if you're putting that maximum effort in, I am not waiting for it to come to the house. I am giving you my money. I'm not waiting. You deserve effort back. And I'm leaving my house and I'm punting down the money for that ticket and I'm buying some concessions that I'm not going to eat. Legit. When I go to see Tom Cruise movies, I buy soda and popcorn, two things that I don't eat. I want to contribute to the entire fucking thing because this dude hung off of an airplane for my entertainment at 60. Yeah, you get it all, dude. Oh, I'm just, that's just where I'm at. Okay. All right, Matt, what do you got? Uh, this is an article about a family that had their toddler pee on their dinner and then they went ahead and ate it anyway. Well, you said two things. You said had their toddler pee on it, which implies that they asked the toddler to pee on the field, on the food. Uh, no. So like the toddler peed on it of his own volition, but I think uh, they filmed him doing it. See, there's so many questions. First of all, why was your toddler on the table dick out? Most of the time, aren't we insisting on pants or a diaper? And did he pee? Unless he's just a hilarious kid and was like, ah, you know, and just kind of walked around and peed in every dish. And then if that is the case, I, if I'm a studio, I sign this kid up right now for a talent deal. Because if his instinct that, as a toddler is, be, is like, I'm going to pee on every dish, that's kind of funny. That feels like a dude in an Eric Andre kind of way with a real future in our business, you know? But it's the eating part of it. Now I'm going to, I'm going to really stay away from, you know, they're eating dog. Why does it matter if they pee on it anyways? Jokes, even though I have a lot of those. Okay. But I really have some questions. Okay. The incident occurred when her toddler, held by his grandmother beside the dining room table, unexpectedly urinated onto the family's breakfast, which included steamed buns, I'll say, eggs, and vegetables. The mother proudly captured the moment on camera and later posted it online. Um, the, so did you guys end up eating the food? Yes, we did eat it. In the post, the mother mentioned that the child rarely wears diapers at home as she believes they interfere with natural routines. What is, what natural routine would a diaper interfere with? Because you could still pee unless one of the natural routines is peeing on the food. Then the diaper would definitely get in the way of that. That If that feels like that's your natural routine. During the day, we rarely put this, 
usually just l- using a cloth or letting him go bare. We do not cover it because it is better not to interrupt the child while he's urinating. How does the diaper interrupt the urine? It actually allows for the urination to happen just in a controlled area. This feels honestly like something that, because if I had a cat that just peed everywhere, I would be like, yeah, this is gross. And my house would smell like piss. It's not just the pee, though. That's right. There's a little, there's a hole on the other side. Yep. Yeah, this seems like, so are there, because I wonder if, if the kid is like a dog and they, cause they like to poop in front of you, but they, but they will come into the room and be like, Hey, hey check it out. They like to go up against a tree or let it roll it down. Yeah. 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 I'm so curious. So th- they, this, this kid pees and poops in the house and then they just have somebody who walks around and cleans it up. It feels like a real quick way to lose play dates for your kid. I, I know I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be like, who, whose house? The Smiths. No, doesn't their kid shit in the living room? Yeah, I'm going to pass on everybody. Not only that, I'm not ever eating dinner at your house. And I'm going to have to insist that you wash your hands whenever I see you. Just on principle, because I know what's happening at your house. It seems so bizarre that you would be like, this is cool, just germ-wise. And let's get into the eating of the food. Now, I know there are people who say that urine isn't bad for you. So, okay, let's put that aside. It can't taste great. It's not like f- flavored, you know? Do you remember that time Jacob called up an Instagram thing about this couple that drinks each other's urine? Yes. And they were like, it tastes like buttered popcorn? Yes, but I, I've smelled my own urine. And usually, outside of like vanilla extract, which really fools you one time where you're like, that doesn't smell. That doesn't taste and smell. That does not match up. The other thing, by the way, that the taste and smell doesn't match up is the human butthole. The butthole smells way different than it tastes. You guys know what I'm talking about. Because if it tasted the way it smelled, it would not be a sexual act. But, but the, the urine I, is not... I've never peed and been like, that smells like buttery popcorn. Have you ever been like filled up with suds and been like, ooh, because buttery popcorn, if I'm going to list, okay, if I'm going to list top five smells when I walk into a room that are great, bacon, coffee, chocolate chip cookies, fresh bread, popcorn in the movie theaters, butter popcorn is in that top five for me. Do you have something that would, that would make that top five that I'm missing? Maybe a steak. Yeah, I love I love a steak, but that smell doesn't entice me the way. And chocolate chip cookies also could be pie. It's like a bakery kind of. And warm bread, warm fresh bread is like, damn it. But coffee, bacon, but butter popcorn is that way. And I have never been in the men's room at an airport and been like, who? <laughs> Who's making popcorn in here? Especially when somebody's been eating um, asparagus. Asparagus. Yeah. yeah, but that doesn't smell like asparagus. That smells something. It's or, dude. I, I will tell you this: the first time you eat beets and then poop, it scares you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you and I forget every time. I'm like, oh, oh, that's right. I'm not dying. I ate beets. For you, you're like, do I have the biggest laceration in my colon? Like, it really. Yeah, it looks like you're, sometimes it looks like your poop is a Prince fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this urine from boys under 10 is considered particularly powerful. And the strongest is believed to be from the first morning before P's one month birthday. What? As per the report, in traditional Chinese culture, the urine of young boys is thought to have special powers. A lot. It is believed to boost energy, reduce fevers, and even protect against bad luck or spirits. That sounds like something that I would say to my little brother. Dude, drink this. Trust me. You want, you want special powers? Huh? You, you want to ward off bad spirits? Drink this. You're going to... Hold your nose. It's good for you. 
urine from boys under 10 is considered particularly powerful and the strongest is believed to be first morning boy, one month's birthday. In southern China, there is an, even a dish called urine eggs. Based on this belief, to make it, urine is collected from young children, usually in schools, and used to boil eggs. This dish is believed to help prevent tiredness in spring and protect against heat stroke in the summer. Well, definitely helps prevent tiredness because I'm probably vomiting a lot. So that keeps me awake, you know, and protects against heat stroke. I can't, this is something, by the way, good to know, just in case I ever go to China. I'm like, can I get the eggs without the urine? Is there a, yeah, what do you want to cook then? Uh, I'll take butter, not urine. Urine eggs. Good Lord. I will say though, man, the Chinese live for a long time. Like, they, and their culture has been, I, I, I know I, I, I hear a lot of ancient Chinese secrets and I'm like, get the fuck out of here. But I'm like, they're, they've been around a long time. And I think their life expectancy is probably longer than ours, right? They look very young. They look very young until they don't. Asian people look very young until one day they look like, they look like Mr. Miyagi. It happens like overnight. But they are very young and they are very healthy. And I wonder if that's from all the urine eggs. Do you, can, you, can you Google life expectancy people in China? Because this is another thing, guys. The, the, uh, I think the pollution in China is kind of crazy. And so all of that life expectancy. Yeah, dude, it's it's bigger than ours. In Japan, 84. Are they doing urine eggs in Japan? I'm sure they're doing something in Japan. <laughs> I 84. Shit. Dude, that's that it's it's a year older than their life expectancy in China is a year older than ours, and they have like a way higher sample size. So that makes it to me even more impressive. Um, life ex- I, I'm, I, okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, okay. I'm not gonna totally poo poo urine eggs. I'm not, or, or, or poo poo eggs. I'm not, I'm because they have, they, well, you know, let's move on to the next one. Woman discovers needle left in vagina during childbirth after 18 years of pain. Nurse accidentally dropped a needle into a woman's vagina while stitching her up after childbirth. And she didn't check it out? I guess she didn't know, but can you imagine living for 18 years with just having a pain in your vagina? Well, I can't imagine having a vagina. (laughs) But, so I don't know, but this is what I'm saying. I know she didn't know, but don't you think maybe year two, you'd been like, you know what? This seems weird. And Hadn't anybody been in her vagina for 18 years? Where, can we do a little research? One, where was the vagina? Not where was the vagina. Where was the needle in the vagina? And how did it get discovered? A woman in Thailand. There we go. Vagina, the woman now 36. Um, Oh my God. Well, this is ironic that she's from Naratwat. That is... (laughs) That is an interesting... Appropriate, yeah. Yep. Accidentally dropped a needle in the vagina 18 years ago. So 18 years old. A doctor apparently tried using his fingers to retrieve the misplaced needle, but could not get it. So he just left it there? He was like, nah, I can't get it. That'll take care of itself? What the fuck? The doctor went in, couldn't get it, decided not to use pliers or whatever they use. Not pliers, but what are they called? Sutures? Pliers. <laughs> <laughs> tweezers? <laughs> yeah, tweezers. They don't use tweezers. They, but they so instead of going in, he tried with his hands and was like, fuck it. I can't do it. Let's just leave it in there. So it said that he was afraid of blood loss due to the delay in suturing. So that's why he decided to, I guess, leave it in there. Wait, blood loss from removing it? Well, I guess they were doing some type of procedure and the needle fell in. And so she was bleeding and he was like trying to fish it out of her, but he couldn't find it. So they don't have x-ray machines? In Thailand? I don't know. I'm sure they have x-ray machines. 
Couldn't you suture it up and be like, hey, we're going to need to see you in about a week. We drop. I mean, can you imagine being like, hey, hey, Justin, don't be alarmed, but we dropped something in there. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, don't, don't be upset, but we, I lost a watch. I'm going to have to get back in there, but we're going to give it a week. That is crazy to me. She was soon feeling constant pain in her lower abdomen. Yeah. Which turned severe. Yeah. An x-ray last year assured the needle was still lodged in her vagina. She waited 18 years. The procedure had to be postponed two or three times as the needle keeps moving inside her. Oh my God. This is crazy. I, I mean, I feel like you could sue the hospital for everything. Her family is poor. Yeah, basically she uh, was fi facing financial hardship because of all the doctor visits, even though it was their mistake. But couldn't, okay, once you x-ray it, can't you bring her right in and be like, we're doing this right now? Yeah, it moves around because it's a needle. But like, don't they have the, you know, the metal detectors on the beach? <laughs> Boop. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> Boop. Can't they use one over her vagina and just kind of find the needle? They don't, can't they send a camera in? Like this feels like crazy to me. And that the fact that they keep charging her because they dropped a needle is bananas. I, I, I'm, I'm like in June, another time woman had lost her life after a medical team left gauze inside her uterus. Or do they think it's just gonna the body's gonna eh, it'll take care of itself? This is by the way, remind me not to go to Thailand for any medical procedures. I do want to visit Thailand, but I am going to make sure I'm in the best shape of my life. Best condition. I'm gonna have antioxidants up to the fucking wazuski. That's and I don't mean to make fun of her situation now that it sounds not as funny um but it is kind of bananas that they knew they dropped it and didn't keep her there i understand needing to close it up but i'm sure she was there for at least another day or two or couldn't you go in through a different i don't know medicine can you tell <laughs> dr josh yeah can you tell <laughs> that i don't know isn't there another hole you can go through but can't you going through the taint or something like that and just get in there with a camera. Well, I, I feel, I feel bad for you, but I hope they have, uh, taken that out. All right, Matt, let's, uh, let's call it a day. Um, what a fun time we had here today. Do you have any questions? Uh, they're all about dicks. Just so you know. Uh, well, you said it, I didn't. <laughs> And so I have no response to that, <laughs> but I will say you're welcome, everybody. And I did not, I went through the whole pod, uh, and was not baited because I feel like, uh, on, on, oh no, I did say it with the kid. I said he was just on the table. Dick out. <sighs> No, I'm not going to count that one. Oh, because that was just, it wasn't about dicks. It was just like, oh, you know, naked baby. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Feeling better about myself. <laughs> uh, guys, listen. Super psyched for life. Come join me for some fun. We're just going to have fun. We might have one or two serious conversations when Jacob comes back. Um, uh, because he wants to, get into his stuff with, without me talking about it. Um, but besides that, I'm here for the fun, man. Follow me for some fun. We're going to have some fun and come out to the shows. They are so, so, so good. I want to tell you how grateful I am for all of you. I do want to real quick go over some dates. Um, first of all, guys, shows are fire, 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 fire. So I'll be in Des Moines this weekend. That is, I believe, the 22nd and 23rd or the 21st and 22nd, but Friday, Saturday. I'll be in Des Moines, Iowa with Lee Syatt. 
Tons of fun. Great show. It's going to be bangers. Those shows always sell out. I'm taking Thanksgiving off. The week after, I believe December 5th through 7th, I'm in Kansas City. Those shows also always sell out. And Amanda Kessel, the winner of the two tickets anywhere, plus plane tickets, our our, um, contest, her and her husband have come to 13 of my shows. And I bet you 10 of them are there. So I'm sure we'll see her there, but those shows always sell out. That also will be me. And I think Lee Syed. After that, everybody, we have a tour of the East Coast. Uh, We're going to be in Red Bank, New Jersey. We're going to be in Wilmington, Delaware. We're going to be in Newark, New Jersey. We're going to be in Easton, Pennsylvania. Um, That is the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Those are all theaters with Lee and Tara. Uh, Tara, you're going to kill me, but I can't say your last name and I don't want to butcher it. But it's the most Italian thing you're ever going to hear in your life. I could say something that would bother her, but I won't. Nana, don't worry about it. And then, guys, um, and then I go to Houston the 26th, 27th, and 28th. Oh, by the way, guys, oh, yes, I do. I have Mohegan Sun the weekend before that. 19th, 20th, 21st. That is with Jacob Thomas Wolf. First week back on the road. Those shows also always sell out. December 19th, 20th, 21st with Jacob. First week back. And then Houston with Jacob and Lee, 26th, 27th, 28th. And Seattle on New Year's Eve. I don't know if the Houston shows always sell out because I haven't been there in a little while. But I'm assuming since I haven't been there in a little while, those people are going to be coming out. And Seattle at the Triple Door Theater on New Year's Eve with my buddy Sandy Danto. So, um, listen, uh, comedian Josh Wolf. Dot com for the tour dates. You can go to joshwolftickets.com for anything uh, and any of the tickets you want to see. Josh Wolf Comedy on all socials. Blotty, blotty, blotty. All right, everybody. I do want, listen, guys, heymanpod at gmail.com. Heymanpod, that's with three A's at gmail.com. If you have any questions for Jacob, uh, we'll read them his first week back. So if you have any questions, I would send them in to HeyManPod, A-A-A-N, HeyManPod at gmail.com. Keep sending me your emails if you want tickets to a show. If you didn't hear back from me, that means I gave away the 10 tickets to that weekend show before I could get back to you. Keep sending them in. I'm giving them away to single moms, single dads who can't afford tickets. People who want to come with their kids who can't afford tickets. People who want to reconnect with their brothers or sisters. This is a family affair, everybody. I want you guys coming to the show. Holidays are coming up. I don't want you not coming if you can't afford them and you want to do something with your family. So make sure you reach out to me. This is very important to me. Um, I remember being a single parent and not being able to go to shows that I wanted to go to because I just couldn't afford it. And I, I want you to to be able to come and laugh and have a good time also. I really love seeing all the fathers and sons that have been coming out to the shows. It warms my nutsack. All right? Ho, ho, ho. Um, So, heymanpod at gmail.com. Also, send me in any questions you have. If I read them on the air, we will send you tickets to a show. I will see you out on the road. I'm excited to announce when Jacob will be back. And love you guys. Talk to you soon. Later. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.